people. But anyway, like for people like me, there's a thing called surrogacy. Surrogacy. Which means, yeah. You guys all know what that is, right? Oh, yeah. We're, I don't yeah, have to. You, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's. That's Where you find a, a willing uh, participant to carry it for you while you, you know what I mean? However, yeah. you yeah. would like to have a child. Yeah, it's I, expensive, I thought. I, I was under the impression. Well, I mean, unless it's somebody you know and they're like, yeah, no, Damn. I'm down. I don't know, but that could are, get are fucked Are we going to talk about soccer? Or... No, we no you, you missed soccer. That was hours ago, bro. <laughs> but yeah. So, we we um, can go back, DBG. But we'll, 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 oh, hold we'll on, wrap. DBG. Yeah, we'll, How we'll, many we'll, games we'll, of soccer have you played on LSD? Because <laughs> we were there with Doc Ellis. Yeah, I, I don't do drugs, man. That, that's <gasps> a smart move. That's a smart move. No, uh, DBG. I will say though, I like caffeine, which is a coffee, which is in coffee. I mean, damn, I am into I coffee. I drink two Mountain Dews a day. <laughs> no, dude, no, get away. No, Connor, you gotta knock that shit off now. I'm not even joking. I'm the son of a dentist. You for your teeth, the acid is alone is horrible in Mountain oh. Dew. The flavor, yes, I will attest. Gosh, it's and it's like it's like drinking the dew of a mountain, and, and and it's amazing. But no, it is horrible for your teeth. It's horrible for your gut. The acid in Mountain Dew is horrible. Do not drink it. Highly recommended from a de from a dentist. Son, there you go. I gotta be I gotta be honest. Despite being a smoker and every. Thing else I drink. I drink two to three I, bottles of water let, a day. Let, let, let Neo finish. Hold on. I was just gonna say. I think the worst thing I do, the most crippling addiction I have, is to monsters. No. <laughs> Listen to Connor. Do the water. <laughs> DPG. Can, can you fix this? Yeah. Wrap this back around. Look, What's up, man? I, I I I'm addicted to Coke. So. Coca Cola. McDonald's. Yep. Uh, McDonald's, it's McDonald's just an ends, uh, means to an end. No, you're wrong. <laughs> DPG, I'm going to teach you the ways of Coca-Cola. You right? know what's real good? No, I, no, listen to me, Connor. No, no, I, no. I'm telling you, Coca-Cola from McDonald's no, is the way. It has real Sweet sugar. Sweet tea. Sweet tea? From yeah. where? From where? Where do we get this sweet tea, this nectar? Well, um, McDonald's is pretty good, and homemade is Really good. McDonald's is garbage sweet tea. They have Coca Cola that sits in reservoirs made from heaven, but sweet tea, right out. Wait, if if but, if, if McDonald's has Coca Cola, do they have the world's greatest soda? Yes, they which, do. Which is Mr. Pib. Jesus fucking Christ. D DPG. Uh, I'm actually a, somewhat of a soft drink aficionado, so like I've like. Oh, don't get me into are, this. Don't get it. Let's you go. Guys, you, guys Let's... Been, you guys ever been in Woodman's? Okay. Okay. I, we're, we're spending at Ohio. least eight minutes in the ne for the next of the podcast here. So, uh, yes. No, I have not been there. Go on. But you guys heard of it, right? So no, it's like San a Wisconsin-based It's a Wisconsin -based supermarket that has, you know, started moving out to the suburbs of, you know, all around Chicago. What was the name of uh, it? The tent, uh, Woodman's. Woodman's. I've heard of it. I have not been. So at least a lot of their products tend to be from Wisconsin, and they actually have their own brand of soft drink in Wisconsin. I forgot something jolly, but Planet Google's. Con no, not <laughs> not that. I'm talking about something called something jolly. Yeah. But these the soda comes like in one of those monster. Not, not Jolly monster, Green River, but, right? Green, Green no. River's an Illinois thing. Yeah, it comes like in a in a Red Bull kit type can but it's pretty good I, i've I never enjoyed even it. heard of that yeah it, it, i didn't hear about it either until uh i think i was watching like uh some sort of restaurant review and out from wisconsin and they they brought it up and i was like oh that looks cool and then surprisingly my local woodman's had it so i i bought some and it's pretty good all right everybody on the podcast top Top three sodas for me, Coca-Cola, number one, Wild Cherry Pepsi, and Dr. Pepper, number two and three, no order. DPG? Uh, I got Coke. Uh, there's this Cuban soda that I like. What's well, not really Cuban. It's uh, made by Cuban, Cuban Americans called Materva. Uh, if you ever go to a Cuban restaurant or a Cuban sandwich shop, they tend to have it. Materva, yellow, yellow can. Materva, 
I'm yep. looking at I'm looking for it now. Yo, they got that uh, 90 miles spot by me. Is that any good? And like it would there be anything vegan there? Nobody eats look, man. Everybody eats meat, bro. You, <laughs> who the hell in land who the hell, who who in land America is vegan? All right, fair, right. I'll give you that. The muerte. Like, trust me, people would rather eat meat than not eat meat. <laughs> All right, guys, it's almost 11, 10 minutes Go to sleep, Whoa, go to the car. sleep, Connor. <laughs> we love you, Connor. Connor, tell us your favorite three, and then uh, we'll, we'll catch you later, brother. Uh, what are we doing? What your favorite three Soda. sodas? Um, Probably Pepsi and Coke and what, what you call the devil's drink, Mountain Dew. <laughs> it's the devil's drink. The devil's piss. Check out Connor devil- No Soccer on YouTube. Connor, last comment real quick. Um, I was just going to say, uh, tomorrow, 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central, 1 p.m. Mountain, um, I'm doing a full World Cup preview on my channel um, with a British YouTuber, Jacob Horsfall, and a good friend of mine, and um, U.S. Men's National Team vlogger, Ryan Edward Fortune, so it's going to be fun. Fortune, he's a big YouTuber Fortune. on the, yes. Mm-hmm. Awesome, Good dude. friend of mine, check him out. It's going to be two Americans going up against a Brit, so should be fun. Sick, man. Cool, Congrats. That cool, man. Mm-hmm. All right. Good luck. Well, Go dominate, brother. All right. Later, fellas. Thanks. Later. Thank you, Connor. DPG. Oh, Guys, man, so I'm looking. I'm look- oh, we got, we got someone new here. We do. Hold on, though. I got I got to tell you these sodas, man, because I don't drink soda. Yeah, but, like, you I, I'm, I have a crippling monster addiction. But <laughs> no, my What? That's got to be worse than meat, dude. I, probably. Yeah. But as far as sodas go, th- this is the ranking, man. It is Mr. Pib, and then it's the Fruit Punch Haritos and the Lime Haritos. Oh, okay. All right. That's, that's, that's how I'm going with that. But Mr. Pib all day. Over He's not, Dr. Pepper. No, you're, you're shit talking. Dr. You're Pepper trolling. is so pretentious. Mr. No, Pip does not need his doctor. What, what about A&W? Eh. The root beer? Okay, if we're talking root beers, do you just want to talk? What's the best root beer? Are you saying, and are you submitting A&W as one of the best root beers? I would, well, I'm just throwing I'm throwing that out there because you said Mr. Pib. You know? I mean, I like A&W, but dude, Mr. Pib is nothing on Dr. Pepper. Dude got a which is Which is the blue can... Uh, Buzz Cola. Beer. Oh no, no. Barks. <laughs> no. Is it bar- is it Barks? Yeah. Yeah. No. What it's was RC? Right, what was RC Cola with like some crazy amount of caffeine in it? What was that called for a while? You guys remember? Jolt. That? Jolt. Oh my god. Jolt. They had Dude, it come everywhere. on, man. Especially uh Chuck E. Cheese's. <laughs> oh no, was it no hold on. It was on Barks. It was something else. I like Barks. They, oh man! Um, uh, can... it's, oh, it's oh, cool. oh! Is it like it's not? It's like Daps or Dads or something like that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't yeah. think of it right now. That's root beer. Yep. Oh, I, and Dads. This, it's weird. It's a weird thing about it is that you don't find that, you know, normally in Chicago. It's very rare to find it. Wait, Dads? You, yeah, I you have find not that seen everywhere. It. I don't know. Like the only time I ever seen it is like when you go out to like a gas station out in the sticks. Well, that's all right. My... I guess I'm out in the sticks. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, that's that's it's one of those things where I don't see it that often. Uh, you know, I, I tend to buy like sodas that I don't really normally have. Uh, you know, like this would probably be you know a contender if I was out in the sticks and wanted to get a soda. Uh, maybe Mr. Pib too. No Actually, way! You like Mr. Pib too? You're you're swearing by us. I thought you guys were trolling me because I'm actually I legit like Dr. Pepper, and uh, but I also like the real sugar stuff, and that's why I'm like McDonald's Coke is just can't be beat. There's one that they brought back that they brought it back for a temp was it for a temporary the like, McRib limited? No, it was like <laughs> a it was a soda. It was a it was in a green yellow can, not mellow yellow. It was called something else. I'll uh, give Neo Tokyo this. I will never have the McRib again. The Mc... <laughs> you know what? I had to try it once. I, you know, I've said this before. Like the McRib reminds me so much 
of like a rib sandwich from like my days in, in the Chicago public school system. Really? I, ha- I yes. had to try it once. I tried it like over, I think it was like five or six years ago because the McRib has been an institution for years and years. But I remember yeah. I was curious about it. I was like, oh, the McRib. Everybody raves about it. Finally, I will try the oh, McRib. There you go. It was called Surge. And I remember trying the McRib and then I remember never needing to try the McRib again. And I haven't. <laughs> it had to be over five, six years ago, maybe even 10. I might be misremembering time. But I just remember I had it once and I was like, I was good. Do you guys remember Surge, like the soft drink? Yes. Oh, I loved it. Oh yeah. my God! They, they, I swear, they, they they debuted these in Chicago specifically, like Surge and they, Jolt. They brought they actually brought back Surge for a limited time. I think it was like two three years ago, and they they were selling like the tall cans of it. Um, but I they, it was like a limited release, and I and I haven't seen it ever since. But yes, Surge was actually I like Surge. It was like a it was like a Mountain Dew almost. But yeah, I do remember um, Surge. Chat saying they don't drink caffeine unless they have next to no sleep and they need it. Connor saying thanks, yeah. y'all. Had to go catching up with a lot uh, when it comes to so- soccer knowledge. Uh, Jones Soda, dude. Do you remember Jones Soda? And I always, I always wanted to have like uh, their. They had a good cream soda. They had a good blueberry soda. But what else did they have? I don't know, man. I, I'm I was never down with Jones. They always were like had those like the Thanksgiving turkey flavored crap. It was a New York thing. My my I got family from New York, so that's why. And that's why I was like. It, and then I also had some neighbors that were from New York, so I was like, oh, Jones Soda, because they were always swearing by oh. Jones Soda. I, I'm actually I'm actually on their site. And I'm looking around. They have like a Jones reindeer poop root beer, twelve pack for fifty Rain, bucks. Reindeer poop root beer for fifty bones. Yeah, or you could get the turkey and gravy soda for was it thirty three dollars? Let's see, they got sugar cookie soda. Okay, that sounds good. Actually. Okay, sugar cookie soda, you got me, you got me too. Oh, yo, so so my neighbor is a is a, a kind of bartender um, by trade, and she got this like screwball stuff that's like peanut butter flavored, and like she did like this cranberry juice and uh, screwball and made like peanut butter jelly shots and then they she made this like like it tasted like cookie dough cake man she made some kind of drink where she Ooh. had like oh my god i gotta ask her how she made that but well, she probably put know. Malort, she probably put some malort nah. in it uh th- <laughs> throw rope throw and rope super flex podcast asking what game you're playing I'm playing dr disrespect's dead drop game here in the background while we're talking u.s men's national team and uh love sex and sugar candy um jolt twice the sugar and the caffeine. Dr. Pepper's the best, by the way, says throwing ropes. And bring back the snack wraps at McDonald's. What the fuck are they thinking? You know what? I don't mind the snack wraps, actually. I used Dude, to they were get them good. Every... Yeah. It's uh I used to get well, I used to get like the ranch, the chicken ranch one. I, yeah, uh, okay, well, damn it, you're speaking my language. I think at one point they had like the Big Mac version of it too. I didn't try uh, that one, but Big Mac's my fucking jam, and I was afraid to try it. But the ranch one I, was my go-to. I, 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 I love this. DPG, I'm so sorry you missed the soccer stuff. Yeah. I, I love Neo. hearing him break out of his shell. He's just like so just angry at us that we're talking about chuckle Neo, fuckery. when was the last time you've been to McDonald's? <laughs> um... You know what? Not too terribly long ago because I didn't breakfast. find out that Ooh. I didn't find out that they cooked the fries in lar- like fat or whatever. Crap yeah, it probably tastes a lot better. Oh, their fries are a lot better. It's yeah, they taste a lot better than that soybean crap you probably used to. <laughs> Bro, I, I'll tell you what. DPG sta- standing invitation. My my girl is a good cook. I, I, standing invitation to come by the crib, have a little fun. And we'll have dinner. It'll be great. DPG distaste for the vegan lifestyle is so fu- it makes me laugh. I like there's some good vegan shit. Like there's some good no, tasty. Well, let me shit. ask you. But there, but some there is some vegan shit that's like no, dude, that's loaded with sodium. Um, there- oh, yeah, well, that's the thing. Like when you eat real, just like fruits and vegetables and shit, it's cheap and it's good for you. But Gosh, like one of my best. You know, like you guys, you guys ever you guys ever seen Grandma's Boy the movie? Yes. Yes, I love that I love movie. Love that movie. <laughs> You know, that's 
that whole scene when they're at the vegan restaurant, that's like what I'm picturing, you know, Neil's, Tokyo Neil's place. Nah, you know? nah, bro. Listen, I, I just had a Sarpino's pizza two days ago. It gets because to they... eat pizza with cheese. Oh, no, but see, but see, see, they don't eat regular cheese. They eat some fake vegetable cheese. What, on the some veg- fake... like broccoli cheese? No, it's, like, it's just basically oil, dude. It's, <laughs> it's like they like eat oil. it. They eat it on some cardboard bread. Oh nah, no! Bread, <laughs> most bread is, dude. Most bread is all good. So like, most bread is good. The cheese is just oil, and then you got like the fake meat stuff, which is all good. Like I said, it's like I'm not okay. always trying to eat healthy, but like, like when I want a garbage pizza from Sarpino's type of thing, I just would. Dude, I get that's the vegan thing. version. Man, yeah, garbage there's, there's pizza some... without meat. Yep, Dude. that's really garbage. Okay, <laughs> okay. I, here's the thing. I agree with both of you. Like, I agree with I, I agree with DPG that like there's definitely like I would say not much, not most of the uh, vegan food is appetizing to me. But there's gosh damn it, I will say for Nefty Neo Tokyo's part, there's some freaking appetizing vegan food out there that is just well, if like you want, if you want that kind of taste man you can go to like you can go to chicago diner you can go to and like, chicago's well, probably one of the better places to be a vegan well, and denver denver's up there too chicago well, and denver and know, san francisco for sure sorry you know you know one one thing is uh i also every now and then i watch you guys do you guys know do you guys know who ryback is the wrestler ryback right, right no no i don't so this guy i guess during the pandemic or two years ago, he actually started eating vegan. Oh, so the, this yes, guy I've seen, I've actually heard a lot of athletes doing this, or not yeah, a lot. He a few. Order, but the thing about it is that the he will actually review the places that he'll eat. Like he'll get like a, like he'll get like a, put like this like a, like a, like a nice like a like a, like a vegan Philly cheesesteak sandwich, and they use that like Beyond Meat, you know, fake Ooh. meat, whatever. Oh yeah, dude, that stuff tastes just the same, man, and you don't gotta kill nothing for it. But, like, but that's man. what I heard that it's loaded with sodium, though, and I heard so that is the meat. Like it's just like no, it's no, when no, you it's eat... loaded with a lot more sodium, is what if, I've heard. It's do it, a burger is on, not... I don't want to fight you on this. Uh, though, by a the burger way. is not <laughs> healthy you're, you're, you're either way. Totally, right? look, by the look, way, look, by look, way, Neo Tokyo, I will see to your knowledge on so much of this. Rather, so so if I ever offer like what seems like so much pushback. No, I'm a meat eater. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like I don't I don't get how much sodium we're talking about because you go to the store, you get yourself a you know a pound of ground beef, you know, you Ooh, make wait. it into a hamburger patter. You put a little salt, you control the sodium, you put salt and black pepper, and that's it. Now that fake stuff, they have to make it taste like meat, they have to make it taste good, so they probably cram the hell out of it with a lot of sodium they and a lot do. of that's what i've added. Read. I, i've read the, the 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 but the thing yes i've read that too but i gotta let neo clarify no i i it's just it's when you a burger is never never healthy right whether it's meat or not you can have <laughs> spaghetti out you can Damn you can have spaghetti right. with meat in it or whatever and it's healthy but like a burger is never healthy oh, so it's just like so when you choose not to eat healthy anyway yeah I'm, I, i've seen no issue with it so right. what you know, I've like, tried to do, at least me and Mrs. Spit and Fire have tried to do, like, we see the benefits of both. Like, we have family that does a little bit of vegan, of the of the vegan lifestyle, but we're meat eaters. So what we do is we do a little bit of both. There's some days where we, we do a little bit more veggies, and some days that we do a little bit, like, everything. And then yeah, that, the only... offset, that offsets the days with the, uh, what's the, what's the, um, the very big steak? Uh, that you, that you load, that you go get fancy, the fancy steaks, basically loaded no. with butter. The only veggies I like is the ones that are, are probably like dripping with like meat, cooked meat juices on it. <laughs> That's like that. DPG's <laughs> problem. <laughs> DPG veggies are good for your heart. Yeah, man, got to get you a salad every now and again. Yeah, but yeah, then you get sick from like, oh yeah, I no, forgot. No, you don't you get... get sick, dude. You're too... Yeah, like, you get, like, literally the opposite. You don't get you sick get, like, from e- veggies. <laughs> yes, you do. Remember when they had that recall with the romaine lettuce? Okay, that, yes. it was... Oh, damn it. You can get sick from meat, though, too, in that same capacity. Dude, but, yeah. that's, that's the funny dude, thing you, is... You guys are both making crap. <laughs> that's so oh. funny, because that, that stuff, that, that the romaine oh. got... got um. <laughs> What was it, E. coli or whatever, from the runoff from a pig farm? Like that, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, but yeah. give me that bacon all day because guess what? They cleaned it. Yep. I just, I'll put it this way, man. There was a point in time in my life where somebody was very sick, 
And so I knew like they wanted to try and eat extremely healthy. And so I was like, cool, let's do that. And so went vegan. And then as I was doing it, I felt so much better. And I just, then I just started dipping my toes in after about six months to a year into like the fake meat and this and that, like, Oh, maybe I do want a pizza. Maybe I do want this and stuff. And then like, it just tasted just as good. Like I was just as happy. So I, mean, I was like, what's I mean, the point? Why, 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 yeah, why kill anything? Right. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, I know professional chemists, which are which are known. What are professional chemists? Um, pharmacists. So I know pharmacists that are you pharmacists that are vegan, and they know what we know. They they know everything we know. They know about our teeth that are literally meant to chew meat. Our our teeth are designed to chew both meat and veggies. Both. We're an omnivore. We're an omnivore animal. And my dad was a dentist. And, and he the way he looked at teeth, the way he looked at he had people who worked for him that were vegetarians. But like, you know, and and and, and at the same time, it's like, yes, it makes sense. There's stuff that makes sense on both sides. I mean, uh, it, 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 but at here's the same the thing, time, like our teeth we... are designed to cut meat, which means uh, for, uh, I, for me, I employ a little bit of balance of a little bit of both. And, and when you guys maybe there's extremes that could be occupied and that's fine and dandy. Well, you know what? You know what doesn't make sense is I'm looking at I, I'm actually looking at the roster more carefully on this US World oh, Cup. Oh no. Roster. Why is Jordan Morris on this lineup? Why? Dude, I asked is... that. Who would you have brought instead? The nipple? The nipple. The nipple areola. <laughs> <laughs> did they not did they not bring PFOC on here? They didn't bring PFOC. They don't play they the same bring, position though. Who else would you have brought? They're listed as forwards. Right, right but that they don't PFOC ain't gonna play on the wing. Who else would you have brought? Dude, well, Gigi I, didn't give not, a PFOC. Not not Jordan Morris. Have you seen that? That guy, I don't know. Here's the <laughs> argument for Jordan Morris, DPG. It's it's that, oh, what if Gio Reyna gets hurt? Then then what do we do? You got you got Jesus Ferreira. You got well. Here's how this is how they got him listed as forward well, midfield and defender. You got a point you know, there. Why not rely on Jesus Ferreira in that regard? You know, it's like, and you look at Haji Wright. Haji Wright has only been capped three times, and he only has one goal. And you're gonna bring this guy to walk up squad? Well, wait, look at his goals in league. He's six foot no, three. I think he's, he's a like for like replacement for Josh Sargent, and it's not mm, not no, like talent Jordan, level, dude, but he's jo- it Josh was him going. Or, dude, it was either him or Jordan Peefock. He and he chose Haji Wright over Jordan Peefock. Do you right. think that was the right call? And I'm looking at the midfield, and like besides like Brendan Aronson, wow, they even brought Kevin Acosta on here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we, <dude. laughs> we just sung Kellen Acosta's praises, bro. I, like, I heard he's a good physical beast. Yeah, he's the guy that called the ball, but that's about it. And, and, but on an international scale, do you really want Kellen Acosta? We're, here's the, the problem. Here's Who, the problem with when we talk about international scale. When we're beating up Mexico and Costa Rica and Honduras, that's not saying much. We don't. It's not like you know. And that's that's my argument with this whole setup, like, you know, the false expectations of these US you know, US fans is that just because you could beat Mexico, you know, two or three times a year, and just because your youth teams go to you know, qualify for the Olympics and whatnot, doesn't mean that you're automatically as good as or could beat a team like England. Or Germany, or France, or Italy. DPG, it's- I agree with you on that sense. But we were talking about this earlier. I mean, when we're looking at this team, there, the starters in most spots, in most spots, tend to be going against not the top competition in the world, but they are still going against the top two, top five percent of in the world. I mean, like, well, when hold on, hold when on. We're looking Listen, at the, everybody outside of the center backs. I'll be right back. I got to run in the bathroom. I'll be back. Yeah, in two I, I got a roll out. here. I got a roll here, but I got, I'll I do have one, one question for DPG here. Yeah. What if Kellen Acosta's move two years ago to Europe went through and he played just as well as he plays for LAFC overseas? Would you then See, yeah. think he was like all about it? Cause like, so, I, that's I the problem think... right there. That's the problem right there. We, 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 we think that things would have turned out differently if Kellen Acosta would have gone to Europe. And the thing is, is 
he didn't go to Europe. He's currently playing in like LAFC. His normal competition is, you know, facing guys that are probably draft picks from college or, you know, bodies that are you kidding? You know, he's, he's he's playing a position where he's going up against every team's DP. Dude, that's what I'm getting at is like I'm saying that these skills are transferable. So like what's if Kellen Acosta like who a who else in the setup that can play the Tyler Adams role when Tyler Adams needs a break other than Kellen Acosta on top of like who plays in in Europe. So what if Acosta's in France playing for a mid-table team if Acosta's in the Netherlands well, or you like, want to play is, Okay. So this is the thing and this is actually this is an argument that was brought up by who was uh I'm trying to think. Uh I think it was, I don't know if it was Jermaine Jones or somebody. This is the same argument they were having with Jordan Morris, because apparently Jordan Morris, before he signed with Seattle, he had the opportunity to go to Germany. And for what whatever dumb idiotic reason, he decided to go to Seattle. And I think, I, mean, I, don't, I, know if it, I don't know if it was Jermaine Jones, but he was kind of said like, dude, you're not – you know, you could learn. A, you could become a much better player in Germany than you ever will in Seattle. I mean, you, you know? say that, but like, look, he plays. He he's won. He's played important games. He's been on the field for important moments. I feel like these skills are transferable from MLS to what? other leagues. I, I think that playing time is way more important than we all realize, and that's why I think that we should have more substitutions involved in soccer. And, but here's the thing, and here's another thing too. It's and you know I I was meaning to bring this up. It's like uh, I don't know. Do you guys uh, do you guys ever watch Danny T or Danny whatever Danny yes, something? Yes, I occasionally check in on Danny T Radio. Yeah, so he actually did a unpopular opinion video uh, like a couple of days ago. Is that the cat with the thin mustache? Yes. Yeah, okay. the guy that's a fire fan, and I don't know what's he doing. He's he actually he's actually a fire fan. He's got he's but, a fire fan. And he's got a sizable YouTube audience, dude. He gets way yeah. more views than we, than than uh, than. But, if, I, if we could figure it out, we could tap into his audience a little bit. That'd be nice. So one 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 point that he brought up that kind of like you know, uh, kind of pissed me off a little bit. Really? Um, was the weather? How like the U.S. national team? has to do cheap tricks to win games against teams like Costa Rica and El Salvador or Honduras by forcing them to play in like frigid temperatures you know I feel like and that it, was that was out of the the terror no, of not no. qualifying this time because like that's no. I'm not a fan of those games either like My thing, and then the con- the counter argument was I think I posted a comment and the co- counter argument was well, you know, we got, you know, the U.S. national team has to play in a monsoon and tropical. What? Like, dude, first of all, most of the CONCACAF is located in a tropical area. All right. They don't have control over that. The U.S., as big of a country as we are, we have different climates. Everywhere. You know, you, oh, my everywhere. gosh. We have, we have literally, we have every climate that you could imagine. Exactly. So you could have easily played this game in Phoenix or somewhere in Texas or, you know, L.A. Or Minnesota. But, it, like, you could play but, but, any but, but type of climate imaginable. But they played in Minnesota because they figure, oh, we need, we need all the advantage. Mm-hmm. So they played in to me, cold, when, when I see Minnesota. So when I see that, I don't see a confident team. I see a team that's using cheap tricks because they're trying to win. Okay, well, you Mexico know? is huge. So they could play their games at places that don't have altitude. Oh, Mexico City will do Mexico City is such an advantage though, right? So See, it, Mexico City, that's their home stadium. That's like saying, you know But why is it oh, their home stadium? It's because the it stadium a, it holds a hundred a hundred thousand people. I right? think it, I think that you they could, also play. knew that they had an advantage playing in the in the height there. Like they recognized you, that players Well, should we play at Ann Arbor then every game? Then, that holds then you know what? Denver. Then it's like saying, okay. Oh, do you do you think the U.S. has never beat Mexico in a qualifier in Mexico? Wow! It's not going to make a difference wow. if they if they if it's not going to make a difference if they play in Mexico City or Guadalajara or Monterey. Oh, I completely disagree. I think if those games weren't at altitude, we would have won a few. No, because now ah. you're going to be facing now you're going to be facing a very hostile crowd, mm. not like the ones you face in the U.S. when Mexico when the U.S. has to play against a very pro Mexican crowd. Okay, the the crowds in the U.S. are nothing. 
like the crowds in Mexico, guys, we got to be honest about that. Like crowds in Mexico, like you, they, I think oh. the players could feel feel it. Oh. Where the crowds in America, yeah, they could feel a couple of rah rahs, but they also know that quite a few fans are, you know, they went out for a bite to dinner before the game, and they're well, and apparently they're spies for the Qatari government as well. What? You didn't hear so, about that? The AO no. being spies for the uh, Qatari government?